What we have to remember is that our eyes are not all we have for seeing with, maybe not even the best we have. Our eyes tell us that the mountains are green in summer and in autumn, the colors of flame. Our eyes tell us that the small country church down the road needs a new coat of paint and that the stout lady who plays the pump organ looks a little like W.C. Fields and that the pews are rarely more than about a quarter filled on any given Sunday. But all these things are only facts, because facts are all the eye can see. Eyes cannot see truth. And it was these words from Frederick Beekner in a sermon he wrote so many years ago, The Seeing Heart, that inspired me to not listen to the naysayers and to take a leap of faith and to serve a rural church that was struggling. It was Frederick Beekner who inspired me 15 years ago to start living my life, seeing with my heart. Because when I began to see with my heart, I began to see God. I began to see possibilities where people said there were no possibilities. Today, we remember Frederick Beekner, a writer who inspired me and I hope that his words of wisdom will leave you more enriched this day. I come to you this day because um, a lot of my colleagues have posted on social media how the death of Frederick Beekner, an ordained Presbyterian pastor in the, uh, in the PCUSA, um, never served a church, but he he saw his writing as a validated ministry, an author of uh, novels, um, ins inspirational books and devotionals. He passed away August 15th at the age of 96. And when I saw all my colleagues posting on social media how Frederick Beekner inspired them, well, I realized that I couldn't add anything else that they have said that have been so beautiful, the words. And I'm not here to eulogize him because other um, outlets have done a better job than I can do. The Christian Century, New York Times, um, they have captured Frederick Beekner's life. But I come to you as um, editor of Presbyterians today to invite you to walk in the footsteps of Frederick Beekner. Come to Frederick Beekner's Vermont because you might have uh, heard me say this before, but for those of you who do not know, I happen to live right down the road from Frederick Beekner. I had no idea that um, when I bought this old house in Vermont that I was right in the backyard of one of my my writing mentor that Frederick Beekner was the one that inspired me to see writing as a validated ministry. As I said, I can't add anything else than what my colleagues have added about how Frederick Beekner has inspired them. I can't eulogize him any better than the other uh, newspapers and, and magazine outlets have already done. But what I can do is take you in the footsteps of Frederick Beekner and be reminded once again of the beautiful words that he has written throughout his life that have inspired so many. I'm also thinking perhaps for Presbyterians Today magazine doing a future either Advent or Lenten devotional with the words of Frederick Beekner anchoring our days together. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. And um, for now, come, let's explore Frederick Beekner's Vermont together. As always, thank you for your support for Presbyterian's Day. And thank you for, I was gonna say thank you for reading the magazine, but thank you most of all for being the lights of Christ that inspire the stories that we put in the magazine. Keep on shining and keep on serving with an open heart and open hands. God bless.